Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So today we'll be doing something interesting. We'll be actually side loading some apps onto the BYD infotainment system. As part of this whole process, first and foremost, you need to do a bit of prep work on your laptop to get the uh, Android development tools ready. And then we will then go to the car, download some apps and try to remotely install them. I'll try to be as simple and um, as layman as much as possible, but forgive me if let's say it gets a little bit technical. So that's when you can actually leave me some comments uh, and then I'll try to help you along the way as much as possible. So without further ado, let's go uh, onto my desktop and get some apps and download those apps, get it installed, and then we'll head to the car and do some installation. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to prep the installation system. Uh, and as part of that, we need to download the Android Studio SDK Manager uh, um, tools, right? Um, this is the steps that we're going to be doing today. Go download the tools from here and obviously unzip it, uh, put it in the directory and move that platform tools into this particular directory we just created. And add this into your path and just refresh your path so you can actually trigger the tools. This is important because without this, you can't actually connect into the BYD Google system to kind of move and transfer and install files. So I'll leave this in the link uh, so you guys can have easy access to cut and paste. But otherwise, um, this is the page of that particular link. I'm using a Mac, so I've already downloaded it for a Mac. You can download for Windows. Now expand the file. Let me see. Okay, so that's that. I'll unzip it just by double clicking. Okay, I will also cut and paste this. I'll make the directory. Technically, I've already done this, but I'll just run it anyway. You'll probably complain that it exists. I'll move this into that. Okay, that's done. Echo the path. Then we initiate it. Oops. Okay. Technically, it should work now, right? That's um, how we get ADB installed. Next, we need to go to the car and figure out the IP addresses of the particular car. Hopefully, you have gone through the initial installation of the tools. Uh, so now what we're going to do is that we need to go download the APKs that you want to kind of load onto the platform and also connect to the car and remotely install it. But first, you need to have a Wi-Fi environment going. So in this case, I'm out here with my trusty phone setting up a tether uh, so my laptop and also the car can connect to it. So as you can see, if I bring up the Wi-Fi, it's already connected. It's important that you also note down the IP address for the connection on the car. So we will then connect from the laptop to the car. All right. Next, the secret sauce really is to hit this car button here into the settings, go to system, oh no, sorry, version. And if you see the, the word factory reset, instead of hitting the blue button, hit the factory reset a couple of times. And then you get a little secret screen. Okay, so it's not much here. Shouldn't touch anything. It's that factory service screen. But if you rotate the screen, you get a few additional options right at the top. Okay, so you actually need to enable the bug debugging mode. All right. So it shows turn on ADB debugging. So that should get us going, and that will allow us to remotely connect to this. So I'll turn this back off. All right, you can go back to the main screen. All right, so the next thing we need to do is, like I said, go to a site to download the APKs. Uh, I personally like to use APK Pure. Uh, you can choose any um, APK sites of your choice. Uh, but of course, at APK Pure, they actually serves up two different type of files. There's APK and XAPK. Essentially, XAPK, it's um, a combination of APK files that make up an application so it's a little bit more complex sometimes you need to extract it before you install it uh, i haven't had a lot of success so i typically download uh, files that just shows apk i've never done google photos before i'm not sure if it will work uh, we'll find out but uh just to give you a heads up with regards to installing apps onto the byd uh, tablet 
it's a bit of a hit and miss. Uh, understandably, BYD has locked it down pretty well. Um, it's meant to not be installing any apps, but occasionally some may fall through the cracks and we could still install it and it works pretty well. Um, one of the main apps that we're going to do the install for is actually this app called Gbox. So Gbox is a very important app because Gbox is essentially is an Android emulator that sits on the console and that's where a lot of the applications will go into. Uh, it's a, almost like a virtual machine, a virtual Android device within an Android device. Um, I already obviously installed Gbox, so I won't install it again. You should get the Gbox uh, APK or download officially from Glabs, if I'm not mistaken, and then use the, the steps that I'm going to do to load the app, to load Gbox first and subsequently the rest of the apps. So since I've installed Gbox already, I'll show you how to install a normal app. But it's like I said, it's the same way to do uh, the Gbox app. Do that first and then do the rest. So coming back to my laptop, um, I've already downloaded Google Photos. Uh, you need to have the terminal set up. Hopefully you can see it. I'll make it a little bit larger. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Okay, um, I will need to connect to the car. Let me bring up the console again. So it's ADB connect so the IP of the car 68.11.19 so it, if you can see it shows connected and that's the status I want to and now I'll install the Google Photos um, app so I'll do ADB install uh, if I I'll name the G Photos uh, oh, sorry, I should go to CD, downloads, oopsie, sorry, I had doing this one hand, CD downloads, okay, um, it's ADB install, uh, G photos, that's the APK name, hopefully you can see this, now hit install. So it will say performing stream install and essentially what it's doing is actually sending the data to the car. Uh, it usually takes a while, uh, depending on the size of the file. Uh, it's not exactly the fastest. So we'll come back again uh, once it's done the install. So we're back, uh, as you can see, um, it's showing up success. That actually took a good minute. Um, it probably took about two to three minutes because the file was relatively large. It was about 200 megs, but yeah, you can expect the transfer speed to be really slow. Sometimes it looks as if it's kind of hung there, but um, trust it is actually going through. Uh, so it, once it's done, it shows success. Okay, so I'll close the laptop for now and I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit. So give you guys a view. So as you can see, there's photos there. Um, so sometimes if you get lucky, the app will work natively within the BYD console. Um, if it doesn't, that's when you actually need to leverage Gbox. So let's see natively if photos work. Uh, I've never done photos before. Let's try. Okay. So yeah, so photos natively works. Um, so that's great. Um, you can actually even log into your Google Photos account if you want to. Uh, I will not do that. I will show you the alternative method if it doesn't work. So that's when you bring up Gbox. Okay. So let's bring up Gbox. Okay. So I've actually installed a couple of apps here already. Um, I'll not. Okay. This message will pop up and say install HMS Core. This is actually more in relation to Huawei devices. So we are not doing that. So we can just cancel it. Uh, but here are some of the apps that I've actually installed that are actually working. So we have YouTube Music, which is a bit like Spotify. Um, I have Disney Plus, Prime, Netflix. So just so you guys are aware, some of these apps, you're not supposed to use it while you're driving because obviously it's illegal in Singapore and a lot of countries uh, because of distraction and whatnot. I typically use these apps when I'm parked and waiting for my kids to get off school, uh, which happens a lot of time. Um, so yeah, just be mindful. But none of it is that what I want to show you here today, it's this capability called clone. So when you click, click on clone, what it's going to do is that it's going to take um, the application from the BYD, 
uh, Android device and copy it into Gbox. So let's try clone on photos. Okay, and click clone. So it takes a minute as well. Okay, so that's done. Uh, it will prompt you to add it to your home screen. Um, it doesn't really support that capability. So I was just gonna say cancel. Okay, so now you have Google Photos. So you should be able to launch it natively because I've already signed in into Google. So my account's there. Um, so I can just go choose that account and get started. Here you go. So these are all the other pictures, um, assuming you have something. But that's that. Um, so like I said, some apps actually work natively. So I've got lucky, actually Netflix works natively. So if I launch Netflix here, let's click on my profile. There you go. We'll pick a local show, Emerald Hill. So, oh yeah, one more thing I want to show you. One of the useful apps to have is actually the Google uh, app. Because once you have Google app, you also can get access to the Play Store. So I can access Play Store here. There's the Play Store. So for example, now you have Play Store here, I can go search up, say YouTube Music, or I don't know, maybe YouTube Studio, whatever it is. And it provides you the option to install um, immediately from here. So by doing that, some of the apps actually work directly. Uh, it installed directly into Gbox and you don't actually need to go through the process of um, loading up the APKs, you know, ADB install, etc, etc. Uh, but I haven't had a whole lot of success. You can give it a try. Some apps actually work, uh, some actually don't. But again, as expected, the whole intent was never to let anybody load uh, all kinds of apps. Um, so yeah, you can have a go at this. Uh, let me know how, they, how you, you know, you fare. And hopefully this um, high level video has been useful for you guys. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next one.